This tank is the Sheridan. This is an American Tier 10 light tank, and the map is Karelia in assault mode, and I'm on the defending team. I am going to get 3,800 spotting damage. I am trying a different maneuver. Normally, I try to take something midfield, but lately what I've been doing is trying to spot the tanks as they approach their fighting position. So I, I haven't found the perfect position yet. You can see that still got to work some of the details out. I got spotted on the way. So now there's a T100 LT that made it through the field. As you can see, if I had stopped at this position, I would have still been able to spot all those tanks. So I didn't have to go as far as I did. And it's look at how it's really going to slow the enemy down. The T100 LT made it to the D4 position, which is a very powerful position for him. But I've also got a great position because I've got these tanks pinned down and spotted, and they're afraid to move. But remember, they know that I am in this position. On their mini-map, they see a little green dot at the location that I'm at right now, so they know I'm here. I got 2,900 spotting damage. And you can see that there's a lot of enemy tanks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, perhaps eight enemy tanks here in the south. So I'm, I'm glad that I did come here. I did slow them down. They do outnumber us. Let's see if somebody, t oh, look at what's happening. Now what happened right here is that T-100, he's right here now, he was at the D4 position. He knew that I was in this position because, like I said, there's a green dot on his mini-map because I was last spotted here. So he came and he hunted me down, and they took me out of the game. So it was a very good move for his team, and I'm going to talk about this real quick. So first of all, yes, you can come out here at the beginning of the game and spot those tanks on the way to the fighting position. You don't have to go past this rock. You can stop at this rock where I am right now or on the other side, and you can be here, never be spotted in that game, and that T-100 never would have known where I was, and I probably would have had a better game. Uh, so I had 3,800 spotting damage, and uh, let's move on to the next game. This tank is a Sheridan. This is an American Tier 10 light tank. The map is Karelia. I'm going to show you a spotting position. This is going to give you a general idea of just how far you can go in this game without being spotted. I'm going to get really close to the enemy territory. So keep an eye on, on the mini-map. I usually take this route. I take this exact same route every time because it's the safest route. If you spot anybody, you can stop whenever you want. You'll notice that I started spotting people. And because I spotted people, I decided to stop so I can check them out to see if they're a threat to me. For example, if they're light tanks and I don't want to get spotted, I would probably stay in the bush. Now, this is somewhat close. You can see that I've gone pretty deep into enemy territory. I'm going to easily spot any of the traffic uh, for the enemy tanks that move across the edge of the border. Now, one of the issues we have to deal with is is we've got enemy tanks that are that are going to be parking right over here, for example, behind this rock structure, and I can't spot them from this position very easily. Uh, over time, I will spot those tanks, but you really want to spot them as soon as possible. One of the issues that you're going to notice in this game is that most of my team went to the southeast, so I don't have snipers on my team backing me up other than the T-54 lightweight. The grill is too far away to snipe any enemy tanks that I spot. You'll notice that I'm advancing to a new position, going from bush to bush, uh, letting the binox turn on. You'll see that when the binox came on, uh, the FV-4005 was spotted. He's going to take a lot of damage. It's not going to happen immediately, but over the course of the game, he's going to take a lot of damage. There it is. Now, at this point, I was thinking, can I respot him? But if you look at the mini-map, you're going to notice that the enemy light tanks are starting to go after our base. You see I'm turning around to see if I could get a shot on those tanks. Uh, so at this 
point, I'm thinking about maybe retreating back to base. We just lost our SPG, and my team is going to need me uh, spotting back at the base. So th this is going to be about the end of the usefulness of this position. Oh, I wish I could have nailed him. I had a chance on him. And there we go, we lost the T-54 lightweight. So as you can see that the game has changed, uh, I just wanted to use this video to show this particular spotting position. So let's move on to the next video. This tank is the Sheridan. This is an American tier 10 light tank. The map is Karelia. I am gonna get two kills. I'm gonna do 3,600 damage. It's an assault defend game. I'm on the assaulting team. I like to snipe from the midfield. And the reason why is because there's a lot of great cover. There's a lot of solid rocks to hide behind. There's a lot of bushes to hide behind. Uh, there's a lot of easy targets to go after. Uh, because of the fact that I'm a light tank, I might not fire my gun. Because obviously I don't want to get spotted. I'm lightly armored. If I get spotted, I'm going to take a lot of damage very quickly. So I headed straight to the solid cover as soon as I fired my gun. Also, my gun is a low penetrating gun, which means that it's unlikely to penetrate the armor of a lot of these tanks. I do have uh, the Coca-Cola consumable and I have the Binox and I'm also running the Coded Optic uh, Directive to increase my viewing ability. Notice that I slowly advance closer and closer to the enemy. I'm not going in in a rush. As long as we can spot somebody, we're going to keep them spotted. As soon as I fire, I'm going to head to solid cover just in case I was spotted. Now you can see that everyone is uh, at the edges of my spotting range. So everyone's pretty far from me. They're unlikely to spot me at this point. I didn't see any targets that I'd be able to shoot at. Uh, you'll notice that the bat chat is in the center of the map, so I'm taking up a different position. There's no reason for us to both take the same position. It's unfortunate that I was spotted here. It, it, it's going to severely limit my ability to sneak up on the enemy. Wasn't able to do any damage. I, I obviously, I must have missed that tank. It's going to be very difficult for me to damage uh, these tanks, as I explained before. So that tank is coming after me. I got to get out of here. When you are running away, you want to get as many obstacles between you and the enemy tank as possible. So that's why I took that sharp right turn. And I'm just as happy sitting here waiting for my allies to come save me. So we did clean up on this flank. The Centurion is now going to have to deal with uh, all of my allies that are going to converge on this area. So because the bat chat went in, I'm going to try and help my ally. I'm going to try and get behind the Centurion to put in a kill shot. Unfortunately, what happened, I was using the auto-aim, and because my ally killed the Centurion, it released the auto-aim at the exact moment, so my shot went wild, and it hit my ally. It's one of the disadvantages of using the auto-aim.
at the time, obviously, I didn't know uh, what caused my shot to go wild. Uh, but I theorized that the reason why was because uh, someone must have killed the Centurion. Score six to five. I've got 1,200 damage and 1,100 spotting damage. Now, you'll notice this is what's going to make the game very easy. Most of the enemy tanks are on one side in one area. So I can make multiple different approaches. I just have to keep them spotted. My allies will do the rest. That was 752 damage. I'm going to count to 10. So by counting to 10, I will become unspotted, and then I will go and I will peek again. But only enough to spot those enemy tanks. I won't be able to damage any of those tanks. Or if I do damage the tanks, I'll only be able to do a little bit of damage. So I could have gone for a rear shot on that object 704. I am obviously looking for that for one of these SPGs. When you are firing at an enemy tank, there is something called a reticle, the, the bloom on your targeting reticle, your shell, your shell is going to land within that circle, so you want your tank to be uh, as covered by that circle as possible. Uh, that's why I had to wait a little bit before I fired on that SPG. So I did 633 damage against the Type 4 Heavy which is quite surprising. And that's the game. The score is 15 to 6. I did 3,600 damage, 1,800 spotting damage, and two kills. This tank is the T110E4. This is an American Tier 10 tank destroyer. The map is Karelia. This is also an assault defend game, and I'm on the defending team. I am going to get three kills. I'm going to do 3,800 damage, and I'm going to do it while sniping from a midfield area. Uh, if you watch my videos, you'll know that I like to play in this position, and you can play this position with almost any tank. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because this tank is a little bit slower. It's only 40 kilometers. Uh, it's a little bit larger. Uh, it's a little bit less mobile. However, I'm still going to do well playing this tank in this position. I, you, I like to play over here because there's a lot of bushes and there's a lot of hard rocks. You can sit here the whole game and not be spotted, depending on how well uh, the enemy uh, comes out scouting. Now, it's still early in the game. It's still possible that the enemy might have scouts. That was 647 damage I did to that enemy tank. So they might still send out scouts that we don't know about yet. And he's taken out of the game. I did 1,010 damage to that tank. So you notice that I'm, I'm focusing now on the southern flank. You got to check both of your flanks. Difficult for this, there's an ally that's right next to me. It's not good for us both to be playing in the exact same position uh, because obviously there's going to come a point where our, you'll notice a lot of enemy tanks suddenly appear to the north. You know, we don't want to shoot each other. And if one of us gets spotted, we might get incoming fire that's intended for one uh, that hits both of us. So it increases the chance that we get injured from incoming fire. I could easily get hit because he gets spotted. Uh, so what I would prefer is if the STA-2 had taken up a different position. There's lots of positions you can take up in this middle area. Yeah. 
that was 873 damage against the Leopard prototype. You have to be very patient. There's going to be a lot of times when you're only going to be able to hit the uh, top of the turret of the enemy tank, and you have to wait for enemy tanks that are trying to flank, uh, the ones that are coming around trying to flank, or the ones that are perfectly situated within a gap. Unfortunately, I missed that tank. For example, it looks like the T-30 is uh, closest to me. However, there is some uh, solid cover between us. So I see the M48 Patton on the minimap. Maybe I'll be able to hit him. So I missed some key chances to hit that M48 Patton. But I see better targets up here in the north. That was 759 damage. He's out of the game. I'm up to 2,642 damage right now. Obviously, that was a blind shot on an ISM. I'm firing high explosive rounds at this point. Uh, on the south side, the enemy has killed all of our tanks in the south. So they will become unspotted. So the blind shot earlier that I tried on that ISM did not hit anything. I did get some spotting damage on the AMX 65T. One thing that's interesting about HE rounds is that they tend to have a one meter burst radius. So even if you hit near a tank or under a tank, you can still do damage to an enemy tank even if you don't directly hit it. The disadvantage is uh, the, the velocity of the ammo is a lot slower. You can see we've got some enemy tanks that are somewhat of a threat. They, they don't usually come up from this uh, position, the uh, IS-7 and the AMX-65T. So that's three kills for me. I took another tank out of the game. Still a lot of enemy tanks in the north. Did 239 damage uh, to that tank. He was sniping up on that hill. There is one enemy tank that has not yet been spotted in the game. So it's possible that there's still one enemy tank up on the hill. And there's that ISM. He's, he's possibly in a position where I'll be able to hit him. Have to keep switching between flanks. Did 346 damage. And you'll notice that when I switch between flanks, I do turn the tank itself, the hull of the tank. It brings the gun around a lot faster. So the STA-2 and I remained here. We were unspotted uh, for the entirety of the game. We didn't take any damage.
did 303 damage against the T28. So obviously now that the uh, the T-28 was taken out of the game. So now we know where all the enemy tanks are. I return to my uh, position, which is a little bit better defended and more double bushing. I'm unlikely to be spotted again. There's unlikely to be spotted again. There's two enemy tanks left in the game. We know where both of them are. So I decided to get closer. One of the things that I would have done differently in this game is I could have advanced a lot sooner on the enemy team. So I missed that shot, unfortunately. It was very close. He's not going to kill me. And that's the game. Score was 15 to 8. I got three kills, 3,500 damage, 750 spotting damage. This tank is a Centurion 7 slash 1. This is a British tier 9 medium tank, and the map is Karelia. This is an assault defend game. I'm on the assaulting team. I am going to get two kills. I'm going to do 2,000 damage, 3,600 spotting damage, and this game is going to be an easy win for my team. As I always do, I like to play in the middle of the map, so I'm heading uh, in that direction um, because this tank, you know, it's, it's reasonably fast, so I'm going to head for a sniping position, but I might pause on the way there. So because I was spotted, I'm going to head for the nearest rocks, get into those rocks, take advantage of those spotted tanks, Nice little gap to shoot through the uh, rock formation. Now this is not the sniping position that's ideal, uh, but it is a good starting position. It's well defended. It's got a decent amount of bush cover. Ideally, you want to be surrounded by as many bushes as possible. So over here, you, you can see there's a, a lot more bushes on this side and I can hit the enemy tanks as they pass through the gap. So because I was spotted, I'm gonna reverse uh, behind the hard cover. Now I know that there's another tank that's still there, which is the Conqueror. Already up to 3,400 spotting damage. So I'm advancing to my uh, bush position again, my sniping position. Enemy 
you do have to check both of your flanks. You have to check, obviously, the north and the south. I missed an opportunity to hit that Somua in the north because I wasn't, I was uh, focused a little bit too much on the south. If you do get spotted heading close to the enemy base, uh, one of the best things to do is to get as close as possible to the enemy base. The enemy usually isn't going to come after you if you get close to that ridge. So now I decided to go through the center. You don't have to go in the center. There's lots of ways to go up. Usually it's pretty safe to roll up in. You can see that nobody can hit me easily and I can just drive right into their base. Lousy shot. You'll notice that I shot at that tank's lower plate without using the sniper mode. Uh, it's very simple. When you're close to an enemy tank, you just point the pointer where you want to fire. It's not that accurate. I, I miss a lot, uh, but it allows you to aim very quickly without using the sniper mode. I'm at a very bad angle. He can hit my side armor. Now, this is a much better angle for me. Uh, the best angle is to have your gun pointed over the corner of your tank. Scores 12 to 3. The best angle is to have the gun pointed over the corner of your tank, the inside corner, just as depicted in this overhead view. I've done a lot of testing, and if you put it too much towards the corner, you're going to get penetrated on the side. So we got one enemy tank left. That was an easy game. The score is 14 to 3. I did 2,000 damage, 3,600 spot damage, and I got two kills. Uh, this tank is a Type 64. This is a Chinese Tier 6 light tank. The map is Karelia. This is an assault defend game, and I'm on the defending team. Uh, this is a wonderful tank. I highly recommend it. It's very mobile. I love firing the gun, and I enjoy playing it. I'm going to show you a sniping position, which is right here. Because I have a fast tank, I'm going to get here without being noticed, and there's a good chance I could be here the entirety of the game without the enemy ever knowing that I'm here. So it is a great position. Now, depending on where you are, from here I'm not going to spot an, any enemy tanks, but I could have taken up an alternative position to allow me to spot the enemy while I'm waiting. This map, there's a lot of people that like to go to this position that I'm pointing to at the map, the D4 position. So you do have to worry about that. If, if someone makes it there, uh, you could it, it uh, makes this position a lot harder to play. So you want to prevent the enemy from getting there, and, and this is a very good uh, position. If you want to know everything you need to know about playing that position, look for my video, Karelia. Uh, assault at D4. It might be two years old. It's an old video, but it's going to show you like 20 or 30 games uh, how to assault at that position. You'll notice that there's uh, three tanks uh, in this area. The AR ARL is spotted, so uh, he's taking incoming fire. I took a hit 
I took a hit that was meant for the ARL. You'll notice that we do not have anyone in the south flank. Our southern southwest uh, flank is completely open. In this type of a situation, look at the mini-map. You see that there's a, a Hellcat right there. There's the ARL right here, and then there's me right here. It, it's good for us all to be here, but it's better if we spread out a little bit. We have targets in the north. We need our allies to spot for us. So it doesn't make sense to really go into the south unless you want to spot for the south, which means you're not going to fire your gun. If we're going to fire our gun, the ARL is going to fire his gun. He's going to have to take up a good position. What I could have done was given up this position to the ARL, but it's, ob it's obvious. Uh, but, but I don't think I'm going to do that for this game. Uh, the Hellcat is here. He's obviously got a good position, but really we should have spread out. Uh, over in the future videos, I will be exploring other sniping positions, and I will show you how to spread out to those other positions, but it's not going to be in this game. You can see we have a situation here, tank up on the hill. You want to keep him spotted. We got a lot of snipers in the back. We just lost the ARL. The ARL was killed by the ISM, and we don't know where the ISM is on the field yet. So I see that the Hellcat is coming down. Got to take him out. He's a big threat. Because I was spotted, I'm worried about incoming fire from uh, this, uh, this side of the map because we don't know what's out there. And we know that on the other side of the map, in the north, they can't shoot at me because they're on the other side of the uh, hill. So the safer position is for me to reverse to this side. So now the Hellcat, the Hellcat did the right thing. He's countering our position. He's making it very difficult for us to snipe from the middle. That's the right move for the, for the enemy Hellcat. I want to help my teammate. I want to get rid of that Hellcat. I'm going to be watching what my teammate does. If Okay, my teammate is dead. If my teammate was going to go after that Hellcat, I would have gone two-on-one with my teammate to take out that Hellcat. But he was killed by the Chi Ri, which is who I was aiming at. If I had killed that Chi Ri, my ally might still be alive. So now what I have to do is remain in a spotting position, but still stay hidden and hope that we can get that Hellcat spotted and hope, hopefully my allies will take him out. I got 445 damage, 256 spotting damage. There's that ISM the ISM that killed the ARL-44. So the Hellcat is playing in a very passive uh, position. He knew he tried to advance, but he got spotted, and I did not get spotted. Now that, I, now that I have nothing to do, I'm going to check up on the Hellcat when I have nothing to do, just to make sure. Running out of targets to shoot at. So I got to pay attention to that Hellcat. Scanning for targets, don't find anything. So now I'm going in to check on the Hellcat just in case he advanced. Just so you know, when you're in this position where that enemy Hellcat is, the best thing to do to become unspotted is to reverse, to go far away. He knows I'm here, I know he's there. If I wanted to run away from the Hellcat, I would reverse to the rock behind me and then get as far away, keeping rocks between us, 
if he tries to go a different direction, he's more likely to get spotted. I'm going to sit here. Okay, so we cleaned up in the north. So I saw the Hellcat making a move for me, but it was uh, my allies were not able to respond fast enough. Uh, that was 676 damage, 256 spotting damage, and I got one kill. The score is 9 to 4, uh, and we appear to have won in the north. This tank is a T110E4. This is an American Tier 10 tank destroyer. The map is Karelia. This is an assault defend uh, map, and I'm on the defending team. I'm going to show you a sniping position. You'll notice that most of my rounds are high explosive rounds, and the reason why is because with this particular tank, I think I have more benefit to uh, having high explosive rounds over the APCR, because I really don't like to fire APCR rounds. I go all day long without firing APCR rounds. I play for hours without firing APCR rounds. I prefer to use the high explosive rounds uh, at this point. So the sniping position is directly in front of me. There's a lot of great things about this position. You can see, you can see that I was spotted. However, uh, this is a great position and it's possible that uh, you could get hammered from this position, but at the start of the game, it's less likely to happen. When the team takes up positions, flanking positions, and you get spotted over here and they know you're here, they can definitely take you out really fast. So it's very important from this point onward to not get spotted in this position. You have to learn how to hide behind the rocks that are here. If you get fire from one side, move to the other side of the rock. Stay within the bushes. Make sure that your gun, when you fire, is surrounded by bushes and rocks so you don't get spotted. I do have trouble in this spot when I have a very slow tank. This is somewhat of a slow tank. Uh, if you have a fast tank, you're going to get here. No one's going to notice you. They, they're not even going to see you on the minimap. Right now, there's a little red dot for my location, so there's a constant reminder to the enemy team that I'm here. Now, a tank like that Super Conqueror, I don't know why he's in that position, but he could be pinned down in that position the whole game simply because I'm firing at him. You want to avoid going to the next row of bushes uh, you have to play very smart. I'm not saying it's impossible, but with this tank, it's a lot more difficult because it's, you increase the chance you're going to get spotted. So that was 805 damage uh, against the Object 268 on the side armor. Uh, you notice that he took a blind shot. So he knew I was here. He took another blind shot. Actually, I don't know if he took a blind shot or not. Maybe I was spotted. But he took two shots at me. They took another shot at me. So what you can do is all you have to do is reverse uh, into that position around the rock and you're not there anymore. You will notice that from this position, a lot of times the tanks will be outside your range. That was 651 damage against the object 268. And you'll notice that I did reposition uh, to avoid that Super Conqueror. When you play the game, you want to be as far away from the enemy as possible, but still have them within your render range. And the reason why, because it puts more bushes in front of you, which means that you're less likely to be spotted when you fire your gun. If you're playing, firing at the other flank, you're gonna wanna be uh, obviously on the other side of the bushes uh, with the reverse situation. It is possible for the enemy to hide from you. So that was a blind shot. He's still blind firing, but he doesn't know that I repositioned my tank to make it more difficult for him to hit me. You do have to go back and forth, and some tanks do have a slow turret. There, there have been games where I've been waiting a long time for the turret to flip around. I got 1,456 damage from this position. 
This position works a little bit better mid-game. At the start of the game, it's not like you're going to have all these enemy tanks waiting for you to shoot at them. It works when the enemy has to try to find a way to go around the flank. As tanks die, they're not the enemy's not going to be as risky going around the flanks, so they're going to be further away from you. So the optimal time is going to be in the mid game when the when the enemy's trying to flank your team and they have a lot of enemy tanks out there. Uh, so the Super Conqueror still took a blind shot at me. Let's see how I'm positioned. I'm not in a good position. I should really reverse more. That was a blind shot. He did damage to my tank. That was with an HE round. Uh, his APCR rounds were not penetrating. I did 418 damage. Now you can see I'm advancing to the next row. You gotta be very careful. I'm advancing because I know that there's very few tanks in front of me. So I'm, I'm a lot less likely to get spotted from this position. I would do it with a light tank. It is difficult to hit up on that hill. That's 2,191 damage, 789 spotting damage. And I got two kills. Okay, so that's the end of the uh, spotting position. I am going to talk about another position now that I'm here. You see where that STRV is? Look out in the mini-map. There's an STRV behind me, and there's a Super Conqueror. There's a position there. I'm pointing directly at it, directly behind me, which is south of the STRV. I tried that sniping position. It was absolutely horrible and completely worthless. I do not recommend it. Uh, there's other positions, uh, like for example, this one right here, I haven't uh, spent a lot of time with. And uh, there's plenty on this side. 